Hi, everybody. This is Mike Oliveris from Juriscue.com, and I'm welcoming back Irina Yedgarova, who is a participating attorney on our network, uh, where we ask different questions about elder law, Medicaid planning, estate planning, and Irina is the authority on the subject. And uh, now I, I want to actually hit a very important point. This day and age, there's so many software companies, online companies, which uh, allow you to create your own legal documents for very cheap, okay? Uh, and these guys are making millions of dollars on that. And uh, one of the things you can do is, I guess, you can create a trust for yourself by yourself online, okay? So I want to talk to Irina. What do you think about this? Uh, why you should avoid using such services and go to an attorney that does this every day, an attorney like yourself that does only that, who has seen it all okay. when it comes to uh, estate planning. Okay, the so I'm not, it's interesting question about trusts and doing mm -hmm. trust online. Um, mm -hmm. For anybody who has property, right? Because you know you have to, when you set up a trust, you have to fund it, right? You have to transfer your property into the trust, whether mm -hmm. it's, real property or, or cash assets or security, whatever it is. Um, it's one thing to create a will online, right? Because it just leaves your assets, whatever you have, you think you're, you know, and we'll go over that. But to actually transfer your property through an online trust, I don't think many people, I hope not many people are engaging in that. Right. It's, it's, it's bad enough when I see them going to attorneys who are not, proficient in, in the estate and elder law arena doing mm -hmm. trusts because trusts are really significant documents that are going to govern you know how your assets are managed tax implications you know distribution administration aspects of it it's really a complicated complicated sphere and even for myself who's been focused on this area for the past at least 12 years um I'm still learning, not the basics, of course, but there's so much to know, right? So, and, the, and like I said before, there are new rules coming in every uh, every year. Yes, new rules, regulations, Medicaid and tax mm -hmm. thresholds. I mean, there's absolutely. So, I don't see a lot coming from online and in, in, in trusts, wills. I do, and that's a horror story. We can get to yeah, that. But sure. for the trust, when I see from other attorneys, even you know attorneys who mean well, and, and they're not doing, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a horrible job or anything like that. The clients themselves don't even know the questions to ask. And they call me years later, oh, I didn't consider tax. You know, I was just, you're trying to, you know, become eligible for Medicaid or something like right. that, or avoid right. probate or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. so they speak with your attorney and then the attorney gives them answers that no, that's absolutely not it. No, you know, irrevocable trusts are not always grant or trust at all. So it's, really something that you should work with an expert on uh very important just like any field 100%. of the right? or any physician you're going to go but to you want to specialize in that field i feel like uh especially in this field because you yeah. are dealing with your lifetime savings you work so hard exactly. to finally build a home to buy an apartment yeah uh, to create some kind of a IRA, uh, don't SAP, be, retirement don't fund. Don't be penny wise and pound foolish. I mean, it's silly. Right. Anybody who would do that, I don't think. I don't think there's many that's people who are actually transferring. And and that's one of the things I actually see with people who come from big estate planning firms and experience estate. But what they don't, there's a disconnect many times about. Yeah, they have a beautiful trust. It looks great, really good. It's on point, but they didn't actually transfer the asset to the trust. So it's a piece of paper that you could flush down the toilet because it has no value without the asset transferred to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's, there could be a language barrier sometimes with a disconnect, right. but other times it's just, they don't take enough time to speak with the client and explain to also, them the significance. You know what? And I've seen also on big firms, bigger firms, things can fall through cracks. Yeah. Uh, you are a boutique firm. This is all you do. So you're going to be personally on top of each uh, file. And I want to urge people, even if they created something uh, before, show it to Irina just for review, uh, just to get second opinion. But also, with every year, situation changes. You may have uh, more kids, maybe you got divorced or what have you, and situations 
change, you may need amendments or changes to your uh, estate uh, documents, right? So I think it's a good idea to every few years or when uh, some kind of a life event happens to go to an attorney like Arina Yedgarova and uh, just review everything. Right. And I just want to touch upon briefly why you should never do a will on like Zoom or any of these sure. legal services providers. That I do mm -hmm. see a lot, unfortunately, even from like, you know, medium wealthy professionals, they, they will like go online and try or ask me if they should do it. Right. Absolutely not. Because in okay. New York, even if you may, you may have like the provisions that are decent in the will and you're happy with it, mm -hmm. the execution of a will has to be with such formality and precision so as to make sure your will is actually accepted for probate when you pass away. Um, this is something that should absolutely be supervised by an attorney, you know, notary witnesses with the affidavit. Otherwise, it's just going to make that probate pro process longer, more drawn out, more expensive. So you're really not gaining anything for the benefit of your children or whomever is going to be inheriting by trying yeah. to save time or, or money doing the legal or whatever. Also, I want to add to that uh, from what you said before in our prior sessions that people think will is the way to go, but will could be very uh, costly way and drawn out way when um, the person passes away to actually transfer those assets mm -hmm. into the hands of the beneficiaries. Right. And as you mentioned before, a trust could be a much better vehicle mechanism uh, to receive your inheritance uh, when your loved ones uh, pass away. And for that, you can contact Arina Yedgarova. We're going to have the phone number on the bottom of the screen. Uh, please post any questions you have um, on uh, Medicaid planning, on estates, on wills, on probate, what have you. You can post your questions on the bottom of this post. And we're going to keep on uh, bringing Arina back to this important subject, as we talked, uh, discussed before. This touches everybody from young to old. If you're already planning retirement, you're nearing retirement, you have to know this. If you're a young person, you have parents, you also have to know this and notify your parents what you've seen, what you've heard, and how this could impact them or yourself. Arina, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We're going to see you next time. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you. Click like on this video. Join us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, follow us and stay informed about all the legal developments that may concern you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, Michael. Bye-bye.